Hello and welcome to Scripture of the Day where you never read alone. Yes, it's another beautiful day here in Huntington Beach and every day is a good day to read the Bible. Today's chapter is Ezekiel 11 where we're going to see the judgment of God coming upon his people. But today we're going to learn something so important that the point of judgment is salvation. Yes, that's right. We're going to see God's glory in salvation through judgment. Now, the first half of Ezekiel 11 is all about the judgment that is coming on Jerusalem. And this is the end of a vision that God has given to Ezekiel that started in chapter 8 when God somehow brought him from Babylon to the temple in Jerusalem. And now here at the beginning of chapter 11, the spirit lifts Ezekiel up again and he brings him to the east gate where there's 25 men. And God tells him these are the men that are leading the people into iniquity. And it uses an analogy here. It's kind of an interesting analogy. The city is the cauldron and we are the meat. Now that, that's a little different than how we might say it today, right? Usually if you have a beef with somebody today, it's a bad thing, but these guys are saying we are the meat. And what they're really saying is they are the choice cuts because the best part of the meat would have been put into the cauldron. And so the idea that you're seeing here in the first half is that the people who are still in Jerusalem, they didn't get exiled with Daniel. They didn't get exiled with Ezekiel. We're still here in God's city. That must mean we are the chosen ones. That must mean we are the ones who are gonna endure and remain. And when they hear the prophecies that judgment is coming on Jerusalem, they're like, no, we're the chosen ones in the chosen city. We're gonna be fine. Look at us. We're the meat, we're the choice cuts in the cauldron. We're worth cooking up. Everybody else got taken away, but we're the ones who remain. That's the arrogance and the pride that's going on in the city of Jerusalem. So in verse 11, Ezekiel says, the city is not the cauldron and you are not the meat. You're going to be judged. See, you've forgotten what it means to be the chosen ones in the promised land. No, you're going to be judged because you have acted according to the rules of the nations that are around you. See, God sent his people to drive out the nations that were in the land of Canaan because of all their abominations. But now, if you're going to act just like all those other nations and commit the same sins and do the same thing that God hates, then you're going to be judged too. See, they've forgotten why they were the chosen ones, why they were the nation set apart so that they would live according to God's ways and not the ways all the other nations were living. This is what it means to be God's people, that he would call us out, that he would separate us, that he would make us holy. One of the things I'm noticing as we get to read through Ezekiel together is that there's a lot of references to Leviticus, which makes a lot of sense because Ezekiel was a priest. And in Leviticus 20, verse 26, you shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. See, the point of being the chosen people is that you would come out from the other nations and be separate in Deuteronomy 8:20 like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. So the reason they were different from the other nations isn't because God picked me, look at me, I'm better. No, the reason God picked you was to set you apart and make you holy. And they've lost the plot of why he put them in Jerusalem. So he's gonna remove them from Jerusalem so that he can show them his salvation. So hey, let's sit down for a second and let's talk about how God's gonna use judgment for salvation because this might not be how you think it works. Like, like here in verse 13, Pelatiah suddenly dies and Ezekiel cries out. Like, are you gonna make a full end of Israel? That's probably what we think judgment is. Like things just coming to a complete end, that's it, all over. But God goes on to explain here in the second half of the chapter, that no, the reason that judgment is coming is he's gonna take Israel to these other nations, to where they are in exile. See, the people in Jerusalem actually have it backwards. They're, they're staying there to get judged. It's the people that are being removed 
who are being saved. And God's going to remove all of his people. There's going to be a remnant in all these other nations. And then he'll bring them back to the promised land. Except when he brings them back, he's going to give them a new spirit, a new heart. And he's going to remove all of the abominable things, all the detestable things. All the abominations of the nations won't be there. Because God will give them a new heart. When he brings them back to the land, they'll have a fresh start. And all of the abominations that they're so caught up in right now, they'll be gone away. They'll be saved from their sins and given a new heart to walk in God's way so that he'll be their God and they will be his people. Now we're back to the theme of Ezekiel, which is the heart. And we already saw that in chapter 3 that they had a stubborn heart, that was the problem. And in chapter 36, the famous prophecy we're gonna get to and study even at church, that God will give them a new heart. And here he, he ends this whole trip to the temple in Jerusalem, this whole vision of Ezekiel. It ends with God saying the new heart is coming and I'm gonna be their God. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna restore a relationship with my people. When I remove them from the land, I'll remove them from the abominations and I'll bring them back to a fresh start in their heart. See, when God judges, it's so that he can put an end to the sin so everyone will know he is the Lord and so we could actually be restored in a right relationship. That's why Ezekiel is a prophet to the people who've been exiled because it's through the exile, it's through the judgment that God is gonna do an amazing work of salvation. Now, when I read the Bible, I never read alone. First of all, I spend this time with the Lord and I ask him to give me wisdom. I ask him to fill me with his Holy Spirit to illuminate my understanding as I'm reading and studying. So whenever you read the scripture, it's always a great time to spend in the secret with the Lord. Second, I read with all of you. And I love the interaction we have here through these Scripture of the Day videos. Thank you so much for your comments. Yesterday, I thought Carl Scarpetti left a beautiful comment about the man clothed in linen, who in one chapter is given marks on the foreheads of salvation, but the next chapter scattering the burning coals of judgment. And he made a great point. Look, this same guy is doing salvation and judgment. That's because we're learning today, Carl, that through judgment, come salvation. And that idea is really driven home in this book that I wholeheartedly recommend. See, not only do I read with the Lord and not only do I read with all of you like my good friend Carl Scarpetti, but I read with some of the guys who write books. And I read a little bit and I read their book to go along with it. And this book right here, I give a 100% five-star recommendation. Like there are a few books that I can say you, a lot, besides the Bible, of course, everybody should read the Bible, but there's only a few other books I would say everybody should read. This book is one of them. This is a work of biblical theology. So he's, it's, not, it's like a study Bible that he goes through the whole Bible, but it's not like a study Bible because he's not getting into every detail and answering every question. He's looking at it big picture. What are the major themes of the Bible and how do they go through the whole thing? And he starts out with the Hebrew Bible, the law, the prophets, and the writings. He takes us through it in the order of the Hebrew Bible, just like the order we're reading it here on Scripture of the Day. And he gives you the big picture. And his theme for the whole Bible is God's glory in salvation through judgment. That's his theme. Like God's gonna show himself when he brings the judgment, watch for it. Every time judgment comes, it's not the full end. There's always a way of escape, a way to be saved from the judgment, which gets things back to how God really wants them to be. Take the flood. Here comes judgment. Is it the end? No, there's a rainbow. It's planet Earth's second chance, and things go then the way God wants them to go. So there's always salvation through judgment. Another book that I've really found to be helpful that I want to recommend, I'm reading a lot of commentaries. Any book we go through in the Bible, I'm always reading the commentaries other books about that book of the Bible. Here's the one I'll recommend for Ezekiel, God Strengthens by Derek Thomas. Hopefully, we'll have them in our book cart. You can always find by Trolley Coffee after the services on Sundays. Hopefully, we'll have some for you this Sunday. Uh, both of these books in the book cart, or you can always get them 
online. But that's part of how I'm not reading alone. I'm reading what other people are saying about it. I'm praying that God will reveal it. And I'm seeing, wow, look at this intense judgment. And I know some people lose heart when, when there's so much judgment in what we're reading. It's hard to keep digging. Well, let me tell you, when you get to the second half of chapter 11, and it starts to dawn on you, your eyes get open, and you realize, oh, the reason God's exiling all over them is so that he can destroy all the abominations that have been built into their life there in Jerusalem and in Judah, and then he can bring them back and start fresh with his people. See, when it, when I, when it hits that line there in, uh, in, in verse 18, that I will remove from it all its detestable things and all its abominations, and then I'm gonna give you not a heart of stone anymore, not your stubborn and rebellious heart, but a heart of flesh. See, then you see what God's doing in this judgment. The people, they're being led into iniquity, and God's gonna deliver them from that by judging the iniquity. When he judges sin, that's when we see his salvation. So I hope that's really an eye-opening thing. And I mean, I can't imagine how this, all of a sudden the spirit takes Ezekiel back to Babylon at the end of all of this. And I don't know if he wakes up or he comes to from his vision. Remember how it got started in chapter eight when the elders were there? So there's people watching him, he has this vision. Then he sees all of this. Like, what does he say? It says that he tells the exiles all the Lord showed him. Like he starts telling them the vision. See, I wonder, how do they respond to his vision? Do they realize that the whole point is not what's going on in Jerusalem? The point is that they would turn to God. I wonder, do the elders turn? I mean, I wonder things like, did Pelatiah really die? Like, did Ezekiel go to Jerusalem and see him really die? Or was it just a vision that he's going to die? Like when Ezekiel comes out of his vision, is Pelatiah dead or is he alive? How exactly does it work? See, God works in mysterious ways. He works in ways that are beyond our understanding. We cry out like Ezekiel, why the judgment? Why bring it to an end? And God says, no, that's not the end. That's just the beginning of my salvation. See, it'll be the same for me and you. There's gonna be such a terrible judgment that's gonna come upon this world. There's gonna be a day of the Lord. There's gonna be just a day of darkness and fear and trembling. A most terrible day is coming upon our planet. And after that, you and I will experience the greatest days we've ever known. The best days are yet to come. The glorious days of the fullness of our salvation. They're all ahead, and guess where they come? They come through the judgment. Judgment is not the end. It's just the end as we know it. And the best is the salvation that comes through the judgment. So let's keep reading the Bible together. And hey, when you read, never read alone. And I'll see you for more. I'll be here with you, everybody. Another beautiful day here in Huntington Beach, a beautiful day for you to read God's Word. It is written, so let it be read on Scripture of the day.